First of all, I'm Daniel Schlagwein. I'm a lecturer in information systems at the Australian School of Business. What I do in terms of teaching is I'm responsible for uh, three courses. One course runs every session, the other two courses run one in the first session, one in the second session. So overall I have a two by two teaching load. Um, so what I'm teaching is in a first year course databases, so how you develop databases which are, you know, behind Facebook, Amazon, eBay and many of, you know, the banks, CBA, Westpac. In the third year courses that I'm teaching, one is a project course where I'm having students develop social media type of applications. So they go through a whole software development process. And in another course, I'm talking about uh, innovation management and how this can be supported by technology. Well, I use peer review as part of an overall course redesign and restructuring of the courses that I'm teaching, especially the later year courses. It's called an experiential learning approach where I try to structure content and develop skills through actually doing projects and through more hands-on work and actually having students develop business plans, develop software solutions in a way that they would actually do it in the industry. So part of this experiential learning approach is that I want to make the students part of the course rather than, you know, you have the lecture in the front and the students separated. I want to have them engaged with the contents and with the way that the course is run. So part of that is also the peer review process, which involves that students get the whole marking rubrics, the marking scheme for the assignments up front, so they know exactly what is expected of them, which doesn't mean they can get to that level. And also I make the assessment of reaching those targets, partly depending on a peer review process, meaning it's other students telling, okay, this group or this student performed well against those rubrics or not. So it's essentially part of an overall philosophy to engage students more, to have more of an egalitarian approach to teaching and being as transparent and open, in, especially in terms of marking, as you can uh, be within the frameworks that we're operating in. There's a couple of ideas how to implement peer review that I picked up uh, through the FALT and graduate certificate that I did last year. So uh, a couple of ideas are, for example, doing it in a staged approach. So I didn't just change the marking model from exclusively lecturer or tutor driven to completely student driven. But rather what I did is uh, in, in the first instance, I just had the peer marking or peer assessment or peer review, however you want to call it, done in parallel to tutor marking and to lecturer marking independently. And then I compared the actual marks. So to see whether in my particular context, this is actually working out and is producing quality results which are comparable to traditional marking. And what I found, and that's in accordance with what other lecturers uh, around UNSW found and what the research literature is saying that peer review is working and is producing quality results which are nearly as good as several lecturers marking and probably better than a single tutor or a single lecturer marking. So I was quite happy with the results. However, I still marked the assignments separately. So it was originally still lecturer marks that they were getting. What I'm doing now is um, essentially starting off with the peer review. So they are giving me their assessment. I get three or five student opinions on each assignment against my marking rubrics. I'm looking at these reviews, re uh, marking the review quality in itself. So it's part of the mark of the reviewer, not only the mark of the student who is being reviewed. So they have an incentive to, to do a good job, essentially, not to mark particularly low or particularly high to, you know, help their friends or, uh, you know, drive down other groups. But they have an incentive to mark as precisely as possible against my rubrics-based uh, marking scheme. And then I look at the assignment myself and I adjust marks and descriptions based on my own reading. Now that has that has worked well. Obviously, you can only do that for you know small to medium-sized courses. If you go for really large courses, meaning in the substantially in the three-digit range of courses, then I guess your option is doing this first stage with the test and then straight going to a completely peer marked uh, model, where essentially the marks are coming automatically out of the peer review process, in which case you would need to implement other quality assurance strategies, such as there, there are uh, including the Moodle uh, UNSW workshop 
module, there are ways of cross-comparing how students are marking and identifying weak markers. There are other elements such as allowing all students to appeal the peer review. So essentially every student can come and say, well, I'm not happy, I am hard done by by this process. So I would like you to, to mark from scratch and ignore the peer review process. I'm always offering that. So far only a single student has ever approached me and asked for this remarking. So uh, I guess students seem to find that very transparent, very fair, and they feel they have somewhat a saying in the process of how marks are defined. That doesn't mean marks are higher, but I think they consider it to be more transparent and more fair. They understand the process, how marks are given in the course.